Storms define our lives. But let's not get too cosmic about it. We're just surfers, that's all. We study storms. We predict when and where they're going to make waves. And then we get there. Last year, we predicted a lot of great waves. In fact, 2018 was a year for the record books. And over the course of the year, we followed four unique surfers to see what they made of it. There was Brett Barley from the Outer Banks, North Carolina, a real straight shooter. Then there's North Shore pipe specialist, Koa Rothman, shooting his weekly vlog episodes. There's Portuguese secret agent, Nick Von Rupp, the undercover slab hunter. And Maui big wave rider, Albie Layer, is unlike anyone else in the game. Between them, they logged more than 100,000 frequent flyer miles and blogged more than any generation before them. 13 passport stamps, 42 airline meals, and 714 Instagram posts. Actually, he just made that last part up. The rest of this is true, however. The waves don't lie. These are the footprints on the road less traveled. These are the storms that define their year. This is a year of being on it. going so far north, you have a big issue with tides, daylight is really short, and storms are so close to shore that winds can change from one hour to the other. It's really hard to forecast. Then you gotta combine the winds with the tide and you know the right forecast. So just forecasting a place like Ireland, it's, it's, it's a mission. That's the biggest challenge of, of surfing in Ireland, but when everything comes together, it's just such a special place. Getting your spot in the lineup, it's just a dog fight. It doesn't matter who you really are, really. No one's gonna give me a fing land out there. I have to take every goddamn wave I get. I win pipes good. We, I definitely don't look anywhere else. I mean, pipe and back door is where I make my career and stuff. It'd be stupid for me to go do what, do a turn at Rockies, <laughs> air that I can't do. <laughs> yeah, I was raised right here on North Shore, and I actually learned how to surf right there at Sunset Beach. Growing up around my dad and Maku and all his friends, and everyone was surfing. It wasn't really like I don't really know what I don't really know how growing up any other way would be besides surfing every day. So it's just it's just been a part of my life ever since I can remember. Hello YouTube, my name is Koa Rothman. 
I am a surfer from the North Shore of Oahu. This summer we're going to be documenting all our travels around the world to these really cool exotic places that we always go to and I want to show you the behind the scenes and the fun we have besides surfing. So if you would like to see it, stay tuned for This Is Living. We plan every episode out in extreme detail down to every sentence. <laughs> Found this coffee and go straight to the bathroom. We have absolutely nothing planned at all. It's just trying to show my life as a professional surfer because people hear about like a surfer's lifestyle and how it works and stuff but they never get to see it. So my goal is to capture all that and show people. And I think we're doing an all right job as of right now. We're learning. It's a big learning curve here. Typically on North Shore, you can tell about six days out if the swell is gonna be good and if it's gonna be good at pipe, but a lot of things have to line up for pipe to be good. Like the sand has to be good. The swell has to be the right direction, the winds have to be good, and yeah, I don't know, I fully forgot that question, which one was it? I just wake up and it's light winds and sunny, I'm like, I'm going surfing. Sometimes I'm chill, like, oh, this is what's happening, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, here's gonna be good, here's gonna be good and here's gonna be good, and this place needs cold water stuff, this is warm water, I don't have this board, I need these clothes. Who else is coming on the trip? It just gets completely stressful, or it's completely chill and easy. After two weeks of vlogging in Fiji, Koa Rothman had just filmed himself flying back home to Hawaii. We're out of here today. And that's when he saw the storm this big purple bruise over Australia. Surfline's climbing 15 to 20 feet. No choice but to turn around and film himself flying back. Nine and a half hours, but it definitely felt like You can't overthink these things, but you can't forget things either. Koa forgot the straps to his towboard. The sets were looking pretty big to paddle, but what choice did he have? Don't think, just go. It was only one way, but sometimes that's all it takes. Brett Barley lives on the outer banks of North Carolina. The 200 mile barrier island is kind of just a big sandbar. It may not last forever, but for now, Brett calls it home and he loves it. My name's Brett Barley, 28 years old from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Well, I actually grew up on the Outer Banks. I actually still live in the same house next door to the one I grew up in. So this is home. It's always been home. I've known nothing different. I've barely even lived off of the street I grew up on. Uh, when I started going to Hawaii and realizing Pipeline was kind of like, you know, I, I liked surfing that wave and I was able to get good waves out there, it became you know, kind of my career path. Get barreled at home, get barreled in Hawaii. <laughs> if I'm not editing or surfing, I'm taking my kids fishing, or if my wife's got plans with them, I'm going fishing myself. And a lot of times we're just like, this is why we live here. We can, middle of the summer when there's tens of thousands of people on the island, we can go to the beach and be by ourselves. So whenever I see a storm setting up, I typically look at Surfline's long range pretty much every time it updates. Uh, I'd like to look at storms, you know, two weeks out, even though they probably aren't gonna happen. I mean, here on the East Coast, you rely on the storm going off the coast and then doing something to make waves the next day. But I'll, I'll watch the long range, and if I see a trend on there and the swell's still there, it's, it's not going away, I know, okay, this is probably gonna turn into something. 
and then as it gets closer I start monitoring like wind models and uh, all that I mean I don't get into like the pressures or monitoring like where the highs and the lows are stuff like that I kind of rely on the people at Surfline to do that for me <laughs> As much as I have it dialed, there's still days that I miss call because, I mean, like I said, we're dealing with the storms coming off the coast and then blowing up and doing something. And so little systems can happen and you aren't prepared for them. And that's kind of the beauty of it. That's why I love living here. I can score waves with no one around because those days happen and we're so far from, you know, anything. Especially days where the wind isn't supposed to be good. I'll walk out on my porch and I have it dialed to where like, all right, if the wind is blowing between these houses in my face, it's west, it's offshore. So if any time that I know there's swell and it's not supposed to be good wind and I walk out and I feel that, I immediately pull up the surfline camera and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta get there. And I just throw my stuff in the truck and head to the beach. The weather is a changing, but you know what that means? The wind has just gone offshore. Waves have just like all of a sudden, boom, turned on. I'm gonna change, we're out there. front of the Atlantic storms, the Outer Banks have excellent waves for parts of the year, and other parts, not so much. At these times, Brett goes hunting. He saw this storm taking shape off the coast of Southern Africa and hoped it would light up another great sandbar. Forty hours of travel and seven airline meals later, he was about to find out. from Maui, 
is a unique figure in this business, known for both big waves and progressive areas. On a really big jaw swell, you can actually hear it from my house, even though we're a few miles from the beach. You don't hear it unless it's big. If you're around something enough, it just seems normal, no matter how outlandish it is to the rest of the world or whatever. It was just something that was normal, like people wrote it. And that was just how it was. If you live here, you're gonna do it eventually, just because you're around it, and, you know, if you're surfing. But, you know, some people do it and they have fun, and then some people do it and it becomes everything they care about. I don't know, the term pro surfer is weird to me. <laughs> like it still doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I mean, obviously I, I surf for a living now and I'm getting to live my dream job, but it feels like you're always still trying to get there. The winner for best maneuver goes to Albie Lair. It's not like, it's not like it happens one day where you're just like, oh, I'm there. Like I did it. <laughs> like you're always still trying to go somewhere else, you know, like further in. After my first time surfing Jaws, actually, it was when I really started checking swell forecasts. Actually looking at surf line and stuff and trying to predict how waves were gonna be and whatnot. Like I remember my dad and like guys like Eric Ader and all that in the old days when they used to surf Jaws, they used to go get um, wind charts from the airport to try and see if there's a swell and that would that'd only tell you if there was gonna be something crazy like a couple days out, so. Like I used to get really worked up about it and check it every day, you know, and see the wind's gonna change, blah, blah, blah. like oh, what's the wind gonna do? What's, how big is it actually gonna be? It's the direction to west and it's like all the stuff, but I mean, nowadays I do a bit of that just because I usually have friends that are coming over. My whole house and just the whole scene before like a, a big job spell is just a shit show. But not like in a bad way, it's just, it's just crazy, it's mayhem. I, I love it, some of the best times I've ever had because I have so many friends that come and stay with me, you know, from Australia or from South Africa. And like a couple, of, like every swell, there's probably like one or two people that have never stayed with me before that I'm like showing Jaws to or something like that. And that's really cool. It's like kind of a lot to handle. Like I gotta remember, I also have to go surf too. <laughs> like it feels like I'm taking care of too many things at once, but it's good. And, and in some ways it, I feel like it distracts me from like freaking myself out if it's actually gonna be a big one. I don't have time to think about like, oh no, what could go wrong? It's never an exact science. You really don't know until the day of. Like you can you can tell it's probably gonna be big or like, and especially we have the buoy that's 12 hours out. And until it hits that buoy, you really don't know what you're gonna get. No, I'm done at Jaws. I can't surf anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna freaking stop surfing Jaws until I physically can't do it. I mean, maybe something will happen. Maybe something super traumatic will happen. And I'll stop earlier. Like one of my friends will die, or I'll get married. <laughs> I. It'll always be, you know, one of the most important things in my life to surf out there. It's. It's always gonna be something I'm gonna do as long as I can. Albie wanted to travel somewhere a bit less complicated, a bit less windy. He found it in Waco, Texas.
people would never think in general that that the Atlantic Ocean is the most consistent ocean in the entire world. For us, it's regular to have 20 foot swells every every second day. If you would tell me 15 years ago that everyone in the entire world would come to Portugal to satisfy their needs of surfing big waves, I would tell them that they're crazy, you know. And sure enough, you know, people are here the whole winter these days replacing Hawaiian seasons for Portuguese seasons because the Atlantic Ocean in general is, is, is insane how consistent it is, you know. Those low pressures just keep on rolling in all winter long. It's one of the, the few reasons why I, why I live around here. It's uh, very authentic, far away from the whole surfing scene and you know you just can't get away and go away for the morning and then buy some local product and it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I grew up with forecasting, uh, being so obsessed about surfing perfect waves. I, I quickly learned how to use it and I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but <laughs> good enough to be the right place at the right time. And For us, the indicators of a good swell is not about the size of the swell, it's not about a purple blob. Uh, we get purple blobs all the time here in Portugal. For us, what makes a perfect swell is the winds. The winds need to be offshore from the east, which is very rare in Portugal. You know, I never thought I would make a career on living in Europe and doing my thing in Europe. I always thought I had to go to Hawaii, I had to go surf pipeline, um, go to Chopu, go to Indonesia and try to do my free surfing thing over there. The truth is, I don't need to go anywhere during winter time, you know. Uh, every week we got a swell in Nazare. If it's not Nazare, it's, it's Ireland. If it's not Ireland, it's Canaries. And, you know, everything is pretty close. So. For six months of the year, I'm, I'm based at home and, and just chasing swells around here. And that really has, has changed the dynamics of, of my travel schedule. You know, it's, you know, I, I, all I need to do is, is be around home during winter time and be active in the Atlantic. We're packing, we're going to Indo. Swells to the Indonesian archipelago form deep in the Indian Ocean. They tumble out of the roaring 40s, trip over Australia, and stumble blindly into this arc of tropical islands. With one of the biggest storms in decades approaching, the question is always where to meet it. Just 17,000 islands to choose from. Nick Von Rupp placed his chips on the Mentawais in the Kandui Resort. Few places in the world have more waves in a single concentrated area, and still have decent Wi-Fi.
While Nick was posting clips from the Bentoise, Koa Rothman had made his way to another island further north, off the coast of Sumatra. bearing down on the Outer Banks, most residents were heading for higher ground. Brett Barley was staying put, looking after his home. Before it made landfall, Hurricane Florence paused. It parked itself offshore and let the waves run out ahead of it. Tuesday morning, Hurricane Florence is a Category 4 heading relatively this way. Here we go. I can't even express how devastating this storm is for the state that I live in, but my home was spared. Surf photographer Zach Noyle mostly shoots pipeline. Why wouldn't he? Pipeline is the best wave in the world. And Zach's put in his years there. He's got his spot just the way he likes it. Preparing for pipeline, to shoot in the water, to swim out, to this day is still pretty nerve wracking. And I think that's what keeps me going back. When I'm watching Pipeline, it's really good. I'll watch it from several different angles. I'll watch what the buoys have been doing. I'll talk to the lifeguards. I'll talk to the surfers getting out. I'll be watching the currents. There's so many factors into it. It's a very dangerous wave. 
So to be as well prepared as I possibly can, that's my goal every time I go out to Pipeline. I pay very close attention to the swell forecast for Pipeline. I'm seeing it as it's two weeks out and just monitoring it and seeing what's gonna happen, what's the swell direction, what's changing about it, because I wanna know exactly what's coming in and how to prepare myself best for that. Um, I still get very excited watching a swell on the forecast to develop and to actually come ashore. What attracted me to the North Shore was the power, the beauty, and the waves. It's the mecca of surfing. Growing up in Hawaii, seeing the Pipe Masters, watching Pipeline, I never could have imagined that I'd be swimming in these waves of consequence. And going out there very early was terrifying. You know, with the current, the crowd, the waves, the reef. So to actually be out there is something just so surreal. What attracted me to photography was a love for the ocean. Seeing the ocean, being in the ocean constantly, and seeing the beauty, it was something that I wanted to capture and be able to show the world. For all his love of pipeline, Zach always keeps his eye on Tahiti. There's another best wave in the world there. Nicole Rothman and Brett Barry were already on their way there. Let's talk some more about these mental effects. Let me graph them for you, try to show you when they happen and how they happen. Now these mental effects to the evangelist are felt to be religious and beautiful and godlike, perhaps because they expect them to be. Realistically speaking, they are nothing more nor less than a period of insanity. There is a rapid, very complete loss of contact with reality. Well, the heart beats a little faster, you breathe a little faster, uh, you may feel a bit anxious. You may see things that aren't there, but you will certainly see things that are there differently. A loss of the body's sense of time. Time may be tremendously stretched, or tremendously shrunken. Seconds may take hours, and hours may take seconds. There's a change in the size, and the shape, and the proportion, and the colors of things that you are seeing ordinarily. And these changes themselves change rapidly, and they're highly colored, brilliantly colored. equally difficult to tell if, if your thoughts are your own or, or belong to someone else. Are you thinking something or is the bulkhead thinking something? The body's natural clock just ceases to function. Meanwhile, in France, Alby Lair was enjoying a delightful run of deliciously seasonable fall swell. This doesn't always need to be so complicated, you know. That's a rule too. But don't tell anyone.
Nick Von Rupp had just flown home from California in time to catch this wave near his home in Portugal. A few days later, he saw a North Pacific swell that seemed too good to pass up. Mavericks is mostly a right-hander. It is a right-hander, and it's not a barrel, almost never. But Nick Shaper in Santa Cruz had some ideas about both those things. I told you, this thing is made to knife the left. Yeah. But there's all this energy going left, but the only way to get it is from the right. You have to backdoor it. It's balls in your court. Pressure's on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mavericks delivering for us. After a year of chasing waves around, it's comforting to end up in Hawaii knowing the waves will come to you. Despite its location, swells never get lost on the way here. So there you have it, a year of being on it. It doesn't end here, of course. It just starts up all over again. Round and round it goes. And the further you search, the more you realize it was all right there where you started. But we're not going to get all cosmic on you. We're just surfers, that's all.
story.